When you think of the word arcade, what does that mean to you? Do you see arcades as places of social gatherings? Are they considered virtual babysitters for children and adults? Do they mean something to you on a personal level? Do they bring back fond memories of when you were a child at the arcade? Do you even have an arcade game that you were fond of? This one goes out to all the kids in the arcade. Arcade machines have been around for roughly 100 years, which the earliest machines date back to the early 20th century with the penny arcades. Penny arcades were a sideshow amusement that for a penny you could see and interact with the game inside the machine. Over the 20th century, arcades grew beyond the sideshow amusements at were one point a $1 billion industry in the United States in the early 1980s. As the years went on, the machines got faster, brighter, and more interactive with the people playing with them. The arcade trend eventually started to die off by the end of the 20th century in the United States, but they have not been forgotten about. If anything, the people who were active and had strong bonds with their experience at arcades were popping tokens and hours into their favorite games, would eventually find a way to bring home their childhood and adolescent virtual love into their homes. Some even decided to share their love of arcades and make their own arcade amusement places in local areas, where they want to share to others on the same personal level that same feeling that they had about arcades in the 21st century. One of the biggest names in arcade machines throughout the history of arcades would be Sega, which is a household name to fans of video games for the past 30 years or so. Sega's name is actually an acronym for service games, a name which back in 1940 was created by three businessmen who were running coin-operated machines at military bases in Hawaii during World War II. Once the Allied occupation happened after the war ended in Japan, service games moved their venture to Japan to set up shop and operate slot machines to the Japanese. By 1965, service games changed their name to Sega Enterprise, and within 30 years became a top-tier company to compete with the other arcade manufacturers during the arcade boom. Dustin Copeland, a university student, currently owns one of these Sega arcade machines in his possession that he's currently working on as a project. Arcade culture to me represents um, people that are very passionate about video arcades, even today. Um, in America, video arcades aren't really that hugely popular, but unless they're at like some theaters or theme parks or whatever. But for it's only kind of rarely that you would see people that still start start up arcades um, to this day. I mean, you can go to some conventions or even auctions, and people will still buy these things at auctions. And then if you go to uh, conventions, like a, conventions, like I said, um, people go there and they're involved in the video room because it relates to people that play video games all the time. And the arcade experience is really in a commutative area or commutative setting where other people are not behind their TV screens and consoles um, in their living rooms or bedrooms or whatever that there's an actual mutual level of respect when you're playing against a person you know, s- sitting next to you. Um, the, cult- the arcade culture is um, very vital for having an interest in arcades and people collecting arcade machines to this day. Uh, my earliest memory of an arcade, I would say, was probably when... something like that. I think the earliest one was I would went, I went to... I lived in Washington State at the time, and there was a driving game, but it also had like a gun mechanic to it, and I think it was like Criminal Investigations or something. 
and I remember playing that when I was five, and I thought it was a really cool game. Um, and then I remember I lived in Texas when the big Mortal Kombat um, boom was happening, and so they had Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat happening in arcades, so you had the group of people that played Metal Mortal Kombat and those who played Street Fighter, so like I got to play with my friends on playing Mortal Kombat games and even Street Fighter. I've never been fond of Mortal Kombat, though. <laughs> Like, when I lived in Charlotte, there was a couple, like, really the arcades I went to when I was a child, or places that had sort of arcades, machines, were just fun places for kids. Um, I decided to own my arcade machine, which is base, which is the uh, Initial D arcade stage, and I decided to own this because this was a big part of my teenage years, because I would get money uh, from odd jobs or from my parents and I would every weekend I want to go and play this game for hours and hours until I basically ran out of money or until I had to leave against my will and um, I don't know it's just it just it means a lot to me to own something like this especially if it was in my grasp and I figured what the heck why not get it uh, since it meant so much to me I guess for me, like, kind of getting it is kind of sort of holding on to this childhood attitude that I have still. Um, that I kind of want to still hold on and it still means something to me. Or this arcade machine that I have. And I'm really proud that I own it. And I'm glad that I'm sitting in it right now. And I'm on the chair and there's another one near me and I can get them both to work. And like I can play it with someone, like that means a lot to me, because then that's kind of like I'm experiencing being 17 again. <laughs> um, actually, I first, I remember I first played, I think it was version 2 of this, um, and it was at a mall in God knows where, Massachusetts or whatever, and it was in the arcade, and I... I was like, oh, what's what's this? But I went into this arcade and I started playing this racing game, and it was it was like kind of fun. I, I it always stayed with me, but I didn't really think of much of it at the time. And with this arcade machine, based off of a uh, anime and manga series in Japan called Initial D, um, it got released over here in America. So then I was like, really getting into it. And the great thing about this is that um, this is a game that requires you to get better over time. It's to me, it's the arcade like you play an arcade game, and you know it's there for either cheap fun or with this, it's such an investment. It's it's basically a money black hole for me <laughs> as a teenager when I didn't have much. And this machine came out at a really good time, especially with like. Um, Fast and Furious was really big, and like import tuning and everything. So having this in an arcade setting where people were a bunch were getting into cars or already car nuts, like this appealed to them completely. And I've always been around cars since I was a teenager. I had friends that talked about them, so I just picked up on it. There was even competition online for um, Initial D. Like there was people that started their racing groups, basically going to the local arcade and getting better times than the other team in this other country. And so you'd had forums set up dedicated to people trash talking other groups, and they only went as far as trash talking. And some of them would post up videos of, um, you know, how they got this like 1.001 second faster than this other guy. My, my name is Amir. Just letting you guys know, I just started with that to 22.8. I went to teach you guys today. I had a run time attack. And it's just fun and you know entertainment for you know people that were late teens, early twenties like myself at the time. So this I just kind of fell into it at the right time, and you know here I am owning it in my own garage, <laughs> at my parents' garage actually. A subculture and within a subculture that play this, and this came around the time uh, that um, Dance Dance Revolution was really big in the late '90s and early 2000s. 
So you had a mixture of the music of Dance Dance and people who played the heck out of that, and I never got into it. And then there's also people that liked the music that was also in the Initial D games and even in the anime series. Um, <clears throat> but it's a combination of all this that really just appealed to me and just hooked me instantly. And I wound up getting it from a local arcade dealer around here that um, he moved to a new location. He was... He apparently sold all this stuff off, and apparently the old place that is now a thrift store now is still has a bunch of his old machines, and this is one of them that was still tucked in the corner. So I figured um, last time I played it, it had some issues with it, so I'm assuming once I get my hands on it, I'll have the same issues so I know what to fix, and that'll be just a fun little project to get my hands on, and just, it, it, makes, it makes it my own. I mean, across the overseas, arcades are really big, and they, like, especially in, like, Asian countries, like Japan especially, they have arcades, people still go there a bunch. When I went to Japan, I played the latest version two years ago of Initial D, and I had a blast doing it. Um, in America, it's... There's only a few like really major arcade places I know of. There's one out on in California that's like an arcade museum, which is really interesting. And then there's a place called China Fair in New York that, or I guess it's former China Fair, but there's people up there that go up there and play Street Fighter or any fighting game or Dance Dance Revolution because it's a community where people go there. You're not really kind of judged on who you are, how you get in there. It's more kind of like, what's your skill in this? and have fun playing against each other and that's really kind of the core of what arcades are about and I guess it didn't do well here because a lot of people because of the con home uh, video game console market that you know why drive out to an arcade and spend money there where you can own the game inside your uh, video game console and play at your house and you pay one fee and you can keep playing it as long as you want to um, Because I would love to go as often as I could to go to an arcade every weekend and play against friends. I and mean, if you have that near your area, go. You know, you need to go check it out. Um, and you might find a game that you love that you. It's always going to stick with you, and you may find it for a couple hundred bucks, which is actually not that bad in arcade collecting. And then you can have it in your wherever you can fit in your home or your garage, and then like, that's your experience, and you get to relive that over and over. Some of the best arcades I've ever been to, I guess it's just wherever Initial D is at. <laughs> so there's like that's a huge social aspect to it, and so if you got if I got someone that comes into my garage and wants to know what this is, I'm glad to play them on it. And that's the purpose of these machines is this community thing. You can get one, and if there's kids around here, heck, why not? I just gotta supervise and make sure they don't break anything. But.